at the four corners of Colorado, New Mexico, Arizona, and Utah. We are about to take these 2-0 DSR electric dual sports on a thousand mile off-road ride up to Wyoming. Look at that. I'm Tucker from Electric Cycle Rider, and joining me on the ride is my lifelong buddy, Mark Jackson from Source ADV. The reason this is a big deal is because electric motorcycles like the Zero DSR have no proven pedigree in high mileage off-road adventure riding today. We want to accomplish it by using the public charging infrastructure and do so without the need for a tow or a generator. We'll be riding for about seven days through rugged and desolate areas. So Mark and I went heavy on logistics and pre-planned our route. We did this by overlaying the backcountry discovery route into Onyx off-road via their desktop app. From there, we had to research and strategize where our potential charge stations will be in hopes that we don't run out of battery deep in the mountains. Then we sync the Onyx maps and waypoints to our phones and hope we don't make a wrong turn. Do you think we're gonna hit every charge point? Uh, that's a hard no. <laughs> <laughs> We're off. The backcountry discovery route is an off-road route that traverses the rugged continental divide over 1,000 miles through some of the tallest mountain peaks in the United States. We will be gaining and losing thousands of feet of elevation every day, experiencing temperature swings that dip below freezing and forced onto fast stretches of trail that will demand us to keep our speed in check, all of which will compromise the battery life of our bikes. To top things off, we've got a camera crew crisscrossing our route in an electric Jeep Wrangler 4xE to capture everything we encounter along the way. Booyah! It feels good to be off-road, doesn't it? It does feel good to be off-road. <laughs> it's about 6.30 on day two, and it's raining. It's raining enough here where there's water building up on top of the tent and all like that. And it's uh, adding a, a level of dreariness trip that's uh, kind of bumming me out right now, so. Got a ways to make it to Telluride, which is our next charge point, and uh, trying to decide if we should break this stuff down in the, in the rain or wait for a little window, but I think we might just be dealing with this all day today. If it's the standard for the day, we won't be able to do over. It's a great point. We're at like, what, I don't know, 8,000 oh, 8, 8, right feet right now. And so it's rain down here, but when we get up to 12,000 feet later today, that difference in 3,000 feet can change this rain to snow pretty quick. All right, so we got a little break in the storm here, it looks like, so I'm gonna take the opportunity to pack up these tents and get the heck on out of here. Got a sneaking suspicion that this road, whenever we see any mud, is gonna be like deathly slippery on these. <laughs> yeah. Here it is. Oh, Jesus. All right, so we're heading down to the Telluride. We've got 37 miles to get there, and I've got just under 35 miles of range. So we're gonna test the regenerative capacities of these bikes and see if we can gain some range back. 
So I'm gonna take it super easy going down this muddy ass hill and see what happens. Whoa, God. Here comes that rain again. Dude, I think that's snow, man. I really wish I put that base layer on. <laughs> We're getting hailed on? Yeah. Yeah, we're definitely getting hailed on. This is a moment where taking a wrong turn would be really bad. Yeah. This is like where that five mile, whoops, might actually end up being me pushing the bike back. Yeah, seriously. You all right? I'm only going to say this once, man. I'm getting really worried about timeline. Yeah. Uh, I can feel rain trickling down into my boots from the inside right now. Oh. Oh, we're really caught in it right now, man. This is bad. I said enjoy that Cortez heat while it lasted. How many miles to town? 28? I'm so soaked. I'm freezing and soaked. This sucks. We're a little wet, and very cold. This sucks. I think we might be adventuring now, Shocker. <laughs> yeah. This is a river. Get me to tell your eye, please. <laughs> no, seriously. Oh, God. Just an update. We are still not in Telluride yet. It is really cold really wet and we're really tired. Let's see how this guy's doing. How's it going, Mark? Oh, it's going fantastic, Tucker. <laughs> 360 <laughs> days of sunshine they have here and we chose the five that have this. Over 300 days of sunshine. You know, I found out that Colorado defines that a different way. It means that it achieves sunshine that day. Well, we did achieve sunshine today. We achieved sunshine, we achieved hail, we achieved rain, we achieved sunshine again, then we achieved rain, and whatever this road is. <laughs> now we need to go achieve some uh, refuge and a charge point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, we made it. Gotta do the scooter move to get the last bit in here. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> well, all of our audio got soaked, so we can't record audio. Our GoPros are dead. Yeah. And your bike is at? It's at 7%, but it went into full lip mode on that highway coming in. Like it literally just was decelerating going up the hill. That was brutal. That was brutal. I was supposed to take like two hours and it took us basically the entire day. Oh, so I'm so happy to be here right now, so you guys. Happy to be here. So, back to our range anxiety. <laughs> this, uh, this stretch is like probably the shortest section, but it's by far the most technical and high consequence, both for the terrain, but also for getting stuck. It's a series of passes that go up in over 12 to 13,000 feet. They have completely different weather systems up there and there is absolutely no services up there. I mean, there are no towns, there are no houses, no electricity, no shelter. So once you kind of break over that barrier, you're on your own. Right. Pass down, four, four to go. go. <laughs> We're up and over over pass, and that's a good feeling. It's still pretty nice out. Uh, range is looking good. 
Mine's at 109, March is at 89. So that's plenty to get us to Lake City. But we'll see once we get to the top of Red Mountain Pass here, and then the other passes that we need to climb, that battery life is gonna diminish again. It's just a, a game of give and take, and hopefully we get enough to make it to Lake City. All right, heading up our next mountain pass right now. We're up uh, Corkscrew Gulch. All right, Mark, 12,700 feet. California Pass, man, 12,960 feet. Top of Cinnamon Pass, 12.6. Heck yeah, man. Oh, wow. All right, man. Well, only one thing left to do. Roll <laughs> on out of here. Dude, heck yeah. We just did this section on electric motorcycles. <laughs> oh my god! I just bought that out so hard. Oh, dude. Did you hear that? Oh, I heard that and saw that. Oh. That was a pretty good one. Oh, another one. <laughs> Slow down. Woo! Oh my god. <laughs> I got that one. <laughs> Maybe it's just me being naive at what these bikes can do, but when you're bottoming out the fork, you definitely know you're putting them to the limit. It's kind of fun to <laughs> just rally them. It also like makes you realize just how resilient they are, you know? Yeah, for sure. Like we are literally smashing metal directly into metal. Yeah. Over and over again. And everything seems to be still holding up just fine. What happened? See here? That should all be one piece, man. These bolts are supposed to go up through the tail light. So I'm guessing it just, it snapped both bolts. Oh, <laughs> that go into the subframe. Jesus. Yeah. That's, we're gonna have to pull the panniers off this and put it in support vehicle. It's one at a time. Easy. We're lucky to have that support vehicle. This, even for things non-electric related, like <laughs> these bags, you know? Yeah, it's a catch-22, right? Because it's like, of course you want to do this authentically and without support. But it's like, at the same time, you know, that section we went through yesterday, if you had asked me, like, okay, dude, we're going to do this without anybody else with us, I'd probably say no, you know, because of, like, where this bike is, like, in its life cycle. It's just a new bike. Um, yeah, it's just like there's a, there's a line between being, like, adventurous and pioneering something and being stupid. Yeah. The day was going way too well for something like this to not happen. What we're gonna plan to do tomorrow is try to put in a big day. And uh, we've obviously got our, our camera guys and support rig following us, but tomorrow what we're gonna do is just try to cover as much ground as fast as possible. So hopefully this will get us through the, uh, the last bit here. <laughs> Looks great. Sure, it doesn't look as, as uh, official as it once did, but. <laughs> Day five, kind of doing something different today. We're gonna ditch our camera crew and see how many miles we can put down in one day on these things. It's gonna be a really good test to see if these bikes can hit that magical number of kind of 200 miles that kind of floats around the adventure world. I know that like when I'm evaluating fuel range on a bike, 200 miles is always the thing. And yes, of course, these things cannot do 200 miles on one charge, but it's a big step forward for the bikes and the technologies if they can do 200 miles in a day. Oh, it's pretty wet here, man. We have been dodging some gnarly thunderstorms. Obviously we got caught in some, but uh, last couple days it's been rolling the dice through this stuff and you can just see in the dirt. It's yeah, definitely got some precipitation last night in this zone. We thought we'd be making up a ton of time and uh, we hit some pretty sloppy nasty mud so much for range day man we're going 10 miles an hour when we could be going like 50. whoa 
We can't get a break on this trip, man. I think we're about 20 miles out from Leadville and uh, yeah, I'm gonna put the hammer down now, and try to get there. There it is. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. DV Lake. All right, so just rolled up to Colorado Mountain College to the, the EV Link charger here and come to find out there's only one of them, but there's two of us. Not what we wanted to see for this range day. Might be a blessing that uh, charge took so long because that looks grim, that looks grim, and where we're headed is blue sky. So hopefully the worst is behind us. Seriously. God, I gotta really watch my 45 mile an hour thing here. So we got some buffer, but a couple wrong turns and we are <laughs> cutting it close. Yeah, good point, man. We did not charge these bikes all the way up because we could not afford to stand around that charge station any longer. It was just taking way too long. So we got these bikes to a point where we think we can make it to gypsum. I'm at 94%. I think you're a little less right now. That should do it, but yeah, we'll uh, hope for better charging in gypsum. There's a road closure and a barricade and a gate up here. Oh, really? So where's the wildfire at? So we have to go down back to the main paved highway? Yeah. Holy yeah. So we're on electric bikes right now. Uh, and it's we're... F yeah. We might be screwed. How would we get to gypsum? I went back to you. Had to go to uh, Glenwood. Glenwood Springs? Yeah. That's the only way to get through? That's the only way we know. Fair enough, man. You literally cannot make this stuff up. Dude, we're 20 miles from gypsum right there. Yeah, like we're close. So close that we can taste it. And we're in the middle of the mountains. There isn't like, oh, we'll just take a side road to get to gypsum. It doesn't work that way out here. Like no. now we have to go all the way back the way we came in and then get on a different road, take that road all the way into a completely different canyon and range of mountains that we were not planning to be in and now strategically figure out how to get from there to where we actually want to go. This is going to take way longer than what we hoped for. Like, do we even have the range to make it to Basalt now? I don't know. Luckily, it is downhill. I mean, yeah. this is adding 60 miles to the tank. Yeah. So I get, you know, our goal was to make it past Gypsum, obviously, today. <laughs> but, I mean, we're going to be lucky if we actually make it to Gypsum today. Tonight. Either way, either yeah, way, tonight, yeah. Either way, it's gypsum tonight. There is no longer a gypsum during the day option. <laughs> We got 10.30. That was a good 14 hours of uh, traveling. Yup. But, but, did we hit our goal of range today? Yeah, a little check here. So we've got, uh, we've gone uh, 218 miles, so. <laughs> Not bad, man. I mean, it did take 14 hours. <laughs> yeah, so pretty bad in that sense, but. <laughs> what a day. Yeah, that was a big one. What a freaking day. Made some progress, so. Yeah. All right, man, you ready to ride? Ready to roll. Right, let's fire these things up. I 
haven't experienced this just yet in this trip. I'm really noticing the lack of noise right now and really getting a sense of peace on this bike. This is definitely one of the more peaceful moments I've ever had on a motorcycle. It's, it's something else. It's definitely a serene experience that's allowing your mind just to be present and slowly make it through here. You know, kind of just uh, floating through the wilderness. I don't know whether I'm more in love with this bike or the gas bike. It's just a totally different experience and maybe they just shouldn't be compared. Maybe that's kind of what's going on here is like, I'm trying to compare them in my head when in reality, they should just be kept separate. Huh. Because this is not, what I'm doing right now is not gas bike riding. I don't, I'm not trying to just get to some destination. It's actually like, it's fine to go slow. That's something I never thought I'd say. It's actually really, really nice to take your time and just enjoy this wilderness. Enjoy this scenery. Day seven, I think. Could be the last day if all goes well. As long as we don't do anything stupid, we totally got this. <laughs> We've been on the bikes for, you know, basically seven days now. Might not sound like a lot on paper, but man, when you're riding and charging and plotting and planning all day for seven days, it kind of feels like that's just your life. And yeah. I'm still having a great time because this is a motorcycle trip and yeah. motorcycle trips are always fun <laughs> and you always have problems, but oh, no. just being forced to have to stop in certain areas and not feel like you have the freedom to push on, you're completely limited by that. Well, this might be the weirdest charge placement we've had yet. <laughs> <laughs> but on the flip side, there are moments, like you said, where these bikes are pure magic. And I felt that a lot on this trip, where you're on really comfortable roads, where the bike isn't really pushing its limit. It's pretty comfortable and it's just so darn quiet, it's peaceful. It's like kind of a dream in some roads. Yeah, for sure. That's, uh, I kept calling it the, the magic carpet ride. <laughs> hey, that was I it, man. <laughs> yeah, that's, I think the, <laughs> that's the border. All uh, right, a little uh, less eventful than I was expecting it would be yeah i like really thought like there was like this hope in the back of my mind that like elon musk would be there and like ewan <laughs> mcgregor you know i'd be like you did another electric adventure like <laughs> yeah man there wasn't even a sign that says that we crossed over into wyoming but we did a thousand miles on these things mark that was awesome man hey nice job man yeah oh, good work sweet so the question we started with is it possible to ride two Zero DSRs 1,000 miles along the Backcountry Discovery Route? The answer is yes. Would we recommend it? <laughs> that answer might not be as definitive. The adventure continues. <laughs>